evening, everyone. Happy quarantine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Get the Fork Out. Uh, this week, we have Dean Harrison, the second time he's been on the, uh, on the show. And this is the third fucking time we've filmed this. Yeah. So I'm remembering to hit record this time. And Dean actually has nice lighting this time. And uh, we'll work it out. It's, it's much better. I think it's going to be, this is going to be our best one, Dean. We've, we've had two practice shots. That's unlucky. Yeah, third time. <laughs> <laughs> But like now it's confusing like where to start like what's uh what's going on so i mean let's talk about for the third time um the your your time on arians came to an end because you had an idea and it's a good idea so why don't you uh why don't you kind of share that idea and and the timeline of when you had the idea and then kind of what was going on your through your mind on arians and like oh man i really kind of want to do this idea <laughs> I was just, I was just sitting work, working with you, mate. That's all. It was, uh, it was <laughs> <laughs> uh, joking, joking. I'm your muse. I'm your yeah. muse. This is, oh, it's beautiful, man. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, so this is a idea that's kind of been stewing for about two and a half, three years. Uh, and basically in short, it's to put other yacht chefs on a platform and up on a pedestal, get these guys out there and show the world, you know, the talented chefs that are locked away in these galleys on these big, shiny charter yachts. And, you know, I'm here to basically go and film these guys, tell their story, tell their backstory, tell, you know, see where they've come from, see what motivated them to first pick up a knife and, you know, explore the world of food. Um, and that's the story that we're trying to tell them basically all the way to where they are now on, a, on cooking for the one percenters on a super yacht. Um, so this is, this is a story I want to tell. I want to tell it in a way that it's a very cinematic storytelling, uh, series. It's not going to be as, as documentary as some things, but it's going to be, you know, we have a good team put together with Jared Monty from Ocean Ocean Air Media. We've got uh, Little Big Studios here in Cape Town. This is where I am at the moment to finish the pilot. And uh, yeah, great team, big cameras, lots of equipment, directors, professionals. Let's go. So, so would you say uh, it's been inspired by the likes of Chef's Table, something similar as a platform? Very similar. I feel like it's... You know, I mean, that's a great, great starting point there is Chef's Table. It's, uh, you know, such a quality series. And I feel we can bring our own spin on that and tell a story almost the same, but with yachts, you know, like super yachts. I feel like that's a, the pinnacle here is to have. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. And also like, uh, I kind of inadvertently threw below deck and we've seen the industry become a lot more public than it ever has. I mean, you, you and I have been in the industry for a while and, and prior to five years ago, or let's call it season one, which was eight years ago of below deck. Like it was a way more private industry. Like no one knew what we did. And whenever you told someone, ah, I'm a chef on a yacht, they would always like launch into this cruise ship story that no one gives a shit about. Like, it's just, it's very different. So at least now, um, well, twofold, people know actually what we do without having to explain it. And then, uh, the second reason is it's just kind of more public now. I think the high net worth individuals and, and the one percenters, the, uh, they also, uh, they, uh, yeah, they realize so that it doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't have to be that secret. Uh, Julia, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's our sous chef, Julia, or Brendan sous chef. Our, ours, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, he's, yeah, he's just having a little shisha. Lovely. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's funny. I keep, I keep hearing that repetitively today. I've had a, had a talk with a, uh, a woman off a charter yacht, feel like a 50 meter charter yacht today. And that was like the first thing she said, she goes, you know, let's create something that's not below deck. That's not a cruise ship, something, oh, you know, and yeah. you know, industry yeah. needs it. Yeah, the industry needs it. It's, it's a kind of a missing piece of the puzzle. Uh, you know, a high quality storytelling piece where on chefs as well, I feel like, you know, people love food, people love chefs. Like that's yeah. the most interesting 
very biased being chefs, but I feel like that's <laughs> an interesting yeah. part. I mean, we no are fascinating. <laughs> watch a deckhand, watch a boat, or, you know, a stewardess scrunch your lip. No offense. Uh, depends. But... Depends how attractive they are, I feel like. <laughs> but where did you get the idea? Where, where, did, the, uh, where did this come from? Take us okay, to like so, the very beginning. So the very beginning, it actually, it was when Jared actually worked, Jared Watney, which some of you guys know, uh, he's now mm. started a media, media company, Ocean Air Media. Uh, we, we always talked about it. We always chatted. We've been mates for, for five, six, six years or so. And we're both very, you know, creative of videography. And, you know, he's a deckhand side on the chef side. And we always thought, you know, to have that deadly combination of have a team like us to go around and shoot on yachts um, and get all these aspects that, you know, he knows that side of things. I know this side of things. And we always talked that we could create this series on chefs. Um, and we must have manifested this because one month later, a director from LA, a producer who's done Netflix, he's done Discovery, you know, some big stuff. He found my website, which I created in COVID in lockdown times. I, you oh, know, yeah. I was locked down in West Palm Beach for one month in this place. And it kind of, it made me focus on what I wanted. I, I created a website, I created uh, food portfolios and all these things. Anyway, he found my website, contacted me and just boosted it to the next level. Um, so the idea you mean, like boosted your idea to the next level. Yeah, well, you know, we just like, he had that kind of expertise of, uh, what we kind of need to do. It was based on what Jared and I were going to create, but I felt like he just gave a, a, a another, I know he kind of energized it a little bit more and made it more serious where we were like, shit, we could make a, yeah. a production from this. Um, but COVID became more and more hard. He couldn't travel. We couldn't travel. It was just a very difficult situation for us to create a TV, a worldwide TV series on super yachts during that right. week of COVID. So that's where it all having someone like that, having someone like that, either uh, I, we didn't say what the website was, but either he noticed the idea if the website was about or manifest the same idea. Like it gives you some sort of like kind of an extra push, like we're on the right track. I mean, this is a good idea. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it was. It was like, you know, for over a year, we talked about it. We, you know, try to make it happen. It just didn't, didn't come to fruition. So, you know, basically the last six months I, I've, pretty much said, look, I, I'm going for it. Who's in, let's go. I'm going to fund it. You know, worked on Aria yeah. the last two and a half, two and a half years. And I'm just like, it's, it's every day. It was just itching. Like I'm just itching to get this, get this done, you know, like after two and a half years. So it's something that I'm very passionate about. I'm very passionate about. I know all the chefs in the industry, their food is a hundred times better than my food, at, but they don't get the exposure that. I may get, you know, because of my social media presence. Um, so I want to put these guys on the platform and show people, you know, there's so many talented people out there that I want to show the world. I, um, I respect the fact that you're just like, you, you dropped, like you have an idea that you're so passionate about. You're like, um, I conceptualize the idea with or without kind of the, the, qualifying factor of someone from netflix actually being interested in it but then you're like i can't think about anything else <clears throat> excuse me i i need to stop doing what i'm doing now in order to actually chase this dream because it's kind of driving me crazy so what i really respect about the, the separate from the idea is that you were just like that nah, i'm doing this like i have to like you kind of don't have a choice right no 100 percent. i was like you know in my mind i was like this is it. Let's go. You know? Um, so yeah, it was just, it, it's, it's out of my control at the moment where I just, it's, I'm sure everyone that's working with me here is very annoyed. They're trying to relax and have Christmas holidays and New Year's. And I'm just like, I've got this chef. I've got this boat. He's they're king. They're ready. <laughs> the captain's approved. And they're, they're just like, calm down, calm down. All right. All right. But, uh, <laughs> I just can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, that's great, man. So I, I, I can feel it like knowing you for a year now and a little bit longer, you know, without meeting you is that I can just tell in you that this is what you're doing. And uh, now much respect, man. It's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And you have my full support backing, whatever you need. Um, but what I wanted to ask you is like, I think you've kind of already 
bit off chunks of this project? Like, haven't you, I think you've been to a, a yacht already. Actually, before that, maybe explain um, your partner in crime, like Jared and, and what he's done, what he's doing and, and how it kind of meshes with, with your idea. Yeah, so, so Jared's a YouTuber. He basically is one of the first guys that kind of pioneered behind the scenes yachting. Uh, he was documented, yeah. uh, I don't know, maybe five years, five years ago, started about five or six years ago, maybe longer, actually hundreds of videos on YouTube. He's been on the grind for, for this long. Um, basically he's got to a point where he's left Ariens and he started his own media company. So he basically goes to boats, uh, to promote the vessel. He does very interesting stuff. So you, most of you know that there's, there's a charter video, there's companies that do these. 40, 50,000 euro charter videos. They look great. I mean, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they look great. You know, um, You're being nice. Yeah. They got models they're, they're, a, they're boring. They're, that's the thing. They're not interesting at all. They're, they're a that's, snoozer. They are. You, you can only watch so many of these charter videos where you're just like, okay, you know where this is going to go. And mm -hmm. Cool looking yacht, cool looking models, wicked. But so what? Where does the video go? It gets a hundred views on YouTube or maybe their website, or they might book a few charters from it. Cool. That's, that's great. Like that's what it's yeah. there for, but we have the advantage to do exactly the same, switch it up a bit where we're yacht crew. We understand the workings of the vessel. We understand, you know, the crew, we understand what goes on with the vessel. So we're able to also reach an audience of 200,000 people plus with our platforms of YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all these other things, which is, you know, people are against it, but it, it's the, it's the nature of the beast at the moment. And you have to really either embrace it or you're going to be left behind. Right. So. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I want to talk about that point too, because I think it's a, it's a fascinating one about all levels of society. It's like even the mainstream media, it's going that way anyway. But I wanted you to like what what is what kind of reach oh, does Jared have on what platform? What kind of reach do you have? Because because that is kind of what you're selling. Besides the product, it's like okay, well we're gonna make you a kick-ass video that's gonna look way better than any of these production companies can do without actual yacht crew doing it. But then you're gonna tack on some pretty prolific reach on, yeah. on top of that. So it's, it's a guaranteed sell, I think. Sorry, went off a tangent there, but. Uh... Basically, oh. yeah, Jared's, you know, he's, he's going to come along and kind of uh, create what he's creating as well, um, you know, behind the scenes of creating these chefs episodes. So we're, we're going to make a high quality cinematic chef episode. And then Jared is also probably going to tag along and kind of hype that episode up, uh, promote the vessel, promote the charter yacht, uh, promote the chef, the crew, all do his thing. Uh, and he's, you know, he's got a reach of 170, 180,000 youtube uh subscribers uh yeah, that's plus, massive yeah it's massive like for a specific niche like this it's pretty big uh yeah so yeah we, we have the ability to get that video in front of eyes not just create a beautiful incredible video it's it's yeah. interesting it's intriguing people watch it people comment people like you know engage i i think too because I, I i sent you a link yesterday uh of someone else on YouTube doing something similar and they got a like 2.4 million followers quality is terrible. Like I, I, I know what you are capable of, know what Jared is capable of like combined, you're going to build a much better product to, to, to sell to clients, but also to be able to put on social media where it'll go. I mean, I think viral is too strong a word, but it's, it's going to go and you're going to be up there in the millions of followers, I think because it's going to be so much better uh, and more intuitive from a crew aspect, knowing what the guests want and need that it's just going to be better than some weirdo walking around a yacht, you know, like, and come on, Mikey, you know, like, Oh, God. <laughs> you guys are going to throw so much more personality on top of that. It's just going to be way better. Plus yeah, the chefs. Uh, I don't want to write these people off, but you know, they're not yacht I have. people. They're... Okay. Well, yeah. You're... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna win yeah. uh you know some of these guys don't really understand the yacht they don't understand the crew they understand what's what so you know we have the we kind of have the insight to create something different than just like a, a walkabout video or you know yeah 
walkabout video. I think that's what it should be called from henceforth. And it's like, oh, sh oh, there's marble in the bathroom. Yeah, there's marble in this bathroom. I like how it leads from the floor to the shut the fuck. How about you know? How about here's the crew? Here's the chief stewardess. Here's the masseuse. Let's get to know these people. Let's. This is the captain that's going to be on your charter. Like, yeah. And these guys, when the guests come to the boat, they book the vessel because they saw the video. I come to the boat like, ah, oh, Brennan, what's up? Hey, you know, like, yeah, it's happened. It's happened before with us with Arians. Like, they will rock yeah. up. I remember you telling me that story. It's awesome. And they were, they was, they will say, ah, oh, they'll say all our names like off by heart. They will give us a hug straight away. We're like, who are these people? You know, but they know us because Jared has just. Come say hi. Yep. Who's that? This is this is Jaleel, Jay Lizzie. Jay Lizzie, what's He's up? Our, uh, he, can't hear he, Jaleel can't hear you, yeah, because I, I got the earpiece in. So he's asking, "What's up? How are you doing?" Good, good. Good yeah. to be back. We actually we actually just saw each other in South Africa a few weeks ago. That looked awesome. That looked fun. Yeah, you said you just saw you in South Africa. Oh yeah, it was fun. We're gonna go. Nice. We're gonna check a basketball game tonight. Not to one up your story, but we're gonna go to a basketball <laughs> game. So. Um, yeah, Euro League, no big deal. No big deal. No holidays. <laughs> Enjoying South Africa and everything. Yeah, are you, are you liking uh, Julio's homeland? Amazing. I'm actually just watching whales breach over there, just out my window, which is really cool. So there's there's whales like breaching like right out his window. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, amazing time of year to be over there. Yeah. Nice. Good to yeah. see you. Nice, man. Good man. See it, dude. Um, yeah. So I mean, you got to walk through videos. The, the, the what you guys can create past that. Now playing devil's advocate here. What if like there's crew changes and stuff on on the videos? Like, are they gonna have to like? I mean, that's gonna some, somebody's gonna bring that up. Yeah, of course. Like it's that is it is what it is. That's the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. But what are you gonna do? You always gonna not do stuff because the crew are gonna leave. Like. No. It's still the vessel. The vessel is the vessel, and they still, yeah. they still hold. I guess the, I don't know, the same. I don't know. They stand by what they are as a vessel. I guess. Yeah, and I think also too. I think uh, yacht websites will will go up in terms of quality and and kind of depth and breadth. Where there'll be crew videos, like crew interview videos, like you can where people are going to want to know you know, the crew that they're going to come hang out with because, and this is speaking for myself about why I like charter boats. Like you're so much more involved. It depends on the boat too. You're involved with the guests. If they want to hang out with you. They want to get to know you. The, the, the crew are part of their vacation. I mean, there's no other way around it because no matter how big the boat is, it's still quite small compared to resort. So everyone's going to get to know each other. And when the crew are comfortable with that, the guests are comfortable with that. And it just gets, everyone's just, themselves you know it's just way more relaxed and way more fun and the crew become a massive part of the vacation and a lot of i think new charter guests they don't expect that and then by the end you're getting handwritten notes and thank yous and it's just it's awesome it's, it's really cool you see the benefits of your work yeah i think it just it also skips that first few days of like awkwardness trying to figure each other out like you know yeah I feel icebreaker like, yeah the icebreaker it's a little icebreaker they can kind of check us check all the crew out before they arrive, even before they book the vessel. That's the whole purpose of this is like, they can check a charter yacht out and go, oh, look at that chef's food. Oh, look how cool the crew is. Look at the toys they've got. Look how much fun they have. Look how awesome yeah. this crew is. Let's book this boat over this boat who's super secretive, has a brochure. <laughs> That's the lamest website ever. The lamest website has a okay, cool charter video with models, but not everyone's a model. So like, you know, I right. can't relate to that. Uh, yeah. It's just a, it's a different way to do it. And I, I, I feel like it's going to be a positive. Uh, we know it works. We know it's going to work. Well, this is that this is that crossroad that we took the other time where I wanted to come back to it. It's like I think that boats boats are going to get left behind in terms of not embracing this shit. Like that secretive time, I think is going to stay for certain parts of the industry for sure. Like the ultra, you know, the eclipse owners and the. What, you know, whatever, that's a whole nother level. But as far as charter yachts, like, no, nah, it. it's, it's just, it's, it's sell it. Like, let's, let's promote ourselves. Let's, let's be the, the yacht that everyone wants to, wants to come on. Like, I just think yeah. that's obvious. <laughs> yeah. It's a hundred percent. Like 
you know, there's, I don't know how many yachts out there, 10,000 plus super yachts, probably. I don't know, you know the stats. I don't know. I don't know. You know it's but you've been in the industry for like 20 years. <laughs> no, I don't fucking Gandalf, but the Gandalf doesn't know everything. Come on. But you know, you know, there's, there's 20,000 similar products out there. You need to be able to mm. separate yourself yeah. from, from this boat that offers the same stuff as you, but maybe you've got better crew. You can show that you've got better crew or better toys or better chef with food and products, you know, like that's, you just gotta, it's the angle. Yeah, I, it, that's a great word for it too. It is the angle, like put your head and shoulders above the rest of the crowd by being bold enough to take the chance to roll the dice on, this is us, you know, like we're good enough to and confident enough to be like this is us come you'll have the best time of your life like we promise i, I think that's that's what the best boats will do i feel like and maybe even some of the not the best boats do. like let's move in that direction it just makes sense i know you feel the same <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's uh it's, it's very exciting you know we've got a we've got a good list of chefs and boats ready to go for the caribbean uh, for the men. So I'm actually a lot more excited than the first time that I tried this where, you know, maybe I had seven or eight chefs. I've got, you know, 14 chefs now that are potentially ready to go. Oh yeah, man. It, it, the, the list will grow longer. It just, it really depends on the program and whether or not they're allowed to be on it. Like, I, I feel like that's going to be the deciding factor for all of these things. It's the, it's not just you guys or the chefs or even the captains it's going to be owners and management wanting to embrace this so and, and i'm sure that they will too i'm not trying to like rain in your parade at all i think it's going to be and and i think you you mentioned one of the other times we spoke and didn't record it um was that you know yacht owners are getting much younger and are almost expecting this kind of service expecting this kind of like face to face before they even get on the yacht like why would yeah you? yeah super interesting the project that we just did with with jared the owner pretty much runs the instagram account like that's the <laughs> you know like that's what it is it's it's it's, it's making yeah. that switch switch at the moment from the older generation generational almost yeah and they're passing it down to the younger guys that have grown up with instagram and all this stuff it's uh super interesting to this this time in this this world space why don't you tell us a little bit about um, Axioma and kind of the, that, that being Jared's project, but it was kind of your, even though you already committed, it was kind of like almost like a test run of what you wanted to do anyway, w along with Jared. Yeah, so it was actually a very spur of the moment uh, situation where Jared basically, it was his was last minute as well, where he got the contract, everything was signed probably like four or three, three or four days before he left. And then and where, where were the both of you? I said, we're, we're in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, and, and what happened while just as you were leaving? What, what, what yeah, so variant? Day, I, I left the day before the, the new variant uh, kicked in. Jared <laughs> left the day before. We just got out of South Africa uh, to get to, to Mallorca in Spain to make for this, uh, this project. Anyway, so I said to him, I'm like, Jared. Real quick, let me interrupt. The reason I'm laughing is the gorilla nature of that. I loved it. Yeah. I love that you guys, oh, fuck it. No, we're going. This is bullshit. We're, we're going to fly about 22,000 miles. Uh, there's a variant straight behind us. Uh, and we're going to go do this and then fly right back. Because yeah, that was, that was, that the was commitment good. and fuck it, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I funded all that, like my, myself. So, you know, I'm willing to invest to just go and give it a shot and basically tag along with Jared to help him with his project. But also he helped me to create a, almost like a, a, a test run with a chef uh, yeah. for the chef series. It was, it was a way for us to just do it quickly. Let's see what we needed. Let's see the shots that we could get. Let's get, uh, you know, Shoreside Provision sponsored the, the, the caviar and the truffles and all these really cool ingredients, which is really cool. Uh, so it was like, it was like a, a, a test run for this and, you know, we kind of proved that it, it can work. Um, and that we did it on a budget, we did it for a very minimal amount of, of, of money to do this. So, uh, it's definitely possible. It's doable. And, you know, the chef that we worked with, uh, Sasha, uh, mm -hmm. he was a German chef, uh, with a Michelin background. He's really, 
really great to work with. He understood videography and photography and was, you know, kind of helping us mold the story and the, the shots that we needed. It was really cool. I'm, I'm going to ask you a question, but I'm going to leave the screen for a second. I got to open the door. Um, so you talked about a couple of sponsors and, and I think like that would be, uh, I'll, I'm, I'll leave the door open. Oh man. Yeah. And the door doesn't stay open either. Yeah. All right. Doors open. Um, yeah, so like, so you have you mentioned a couple of sponsors, but I think that's going to be key because in the future, like, you guys are going to have like all this exposure. I, I'm I'm confident that you guys are going to get exposure for any of these these entities, whether they're provisioners or anything else inside the industry, that could just yeah, I just I just think it goes hand in hand. You know, you could even get stickers on yourself on the put on the chefs like NASCAR. You know, like, <laughs> jokes. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> all, over the, all over the chef jackets. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, this is this is going to be a super super important bit because you know without these sponsors, they're going to be helping us out. You know, this show is not going to be possible, or I'm going to go completely broke and have to go back to chopping onions. On a on a yacht, so. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa! What's wrong with that, motherfucker? I, I still do. It. Come back. on. I've got it. Oh back. yeah. I've got it oh. Back. <laughs> oh, whatever. Like half my age. Yeah, it's fine. Honestly, my back's my back's getting so much better since I left. Like. Do, do you know? What? I got a I got a theory about backs on on yachts. Obviously, they're, they're bad in restaurants too. It's the undercounter dishwashers. So every galley design, they don't go in there. There's always push throughs. And I've worked out like the cubic like meterage. It's not that much more for a push through and it saves your back because that's the busiest part of the galley is a dishwasher. You crack up. You crack up. Tangent. What? The amount of space that you used to like have these conversations in your head, it's incredible. I don't get it what you're saying, but I think it's a compliment. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, yeah, sponsors. Sponsors would be cool. But like, I, think, I think you need a massive, your biggest expenses are going to be travel and lodging. For sure. I think you need a, I need, you need a big, it doesn't even have to be an industry travel agent, does it? I mean, that'd be helpful, but it could be anyone really. We, we, we want to stick. Your exposure is big enough. Yeah. Like we want to stick to, to the industry. We want to stick to the, the people that we've worked with in past, in the past as well. Uh, you know, the people that I've used, the people that I've stayed connected with for the. Yeah. For the relationships. I want to. I want to give back as well as you know show all these incredible businesses that don't get the the platform you know they they don't they're, yeah some of them have just got a few hundred followers but they're incredible companies that do some of the craziest things that you've you've ever seen so i want to i want to show them off as well as just as much as you know um vice versa so yeah, yeah. you know we're, provisioning is like the first uh most yeah uh, easiest answer there is that's the best way to incorporate into the show. Uh, but you know, you've got uniform companies, you've got yep. uh, wine companies, you've got uh, travel, yeah. travel companies. Like we could name them because because we can pitch already like Liquid Yachtwear, Onshore yeah. Sellers, um, yeah. uh, Tommy Baldwin's, Shore Side um, support. Uh, support. I just think that it's all, it's all right there and it'll be mutually beneficial like clearly i think yeah i mean we've already got a few people that are just like yep whatever you guys are doing they kind of trust they trust the process they've seen what we've done they've seen what jared's done now yeah. we've got a we've got an exceptional production company here that's just like going to up absolutely everything that we've done in the past it just makes sense to get a, get involved and i i want to reward the guys that get involved early and give back for when this really just blows up I think it will too. And I was just thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to tell the story because it's going to be too long and too boring. But basically, I approached BMW for sponsorship. And my very first motorcycle trip, they said no because there was no history of me doing anything like this. But you and Jared have history. Like you can just see it, it's right there online. And, and, and I think the people already know the kind of an ex, have an expectation of the level that they're going to get in terms of quality and, and entertainment value from the two of you. And I, I think that's why it's gonna be an easy sell to, 
the, any sponsor, you just slide a piece of paper in front of like, hey, this is what we need. Can you help us out? Yeah, exactly. And you know, like the not even thinking of this, but we're doing it for free. Like we are doing this for free to start with to get the first season. For now. For now. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Yeah. It's gonna but the thing is it you know, it could switch up to a point where people are gonna be paid to be on this platform where the you know everyone can come see charter vessel if you're not here you're not you're not the boat you know so um so i think that's a big selling point there is you know we're not here to put the vessel out we're not here to take over the vessel for seven days and do some crazy shoot we're here to document the chef and film the galley and you know we're not here to interrupt the the schedule of the vessel yeah and, that, and that's why being crew, the two of you, you're going to know the, the scheduling, the inner workings of the yacht, how to not be intrusive, how to just get in there, like have your have your your shot set ready, your list going and just hammer it through. And because and we, we you and I both know how busy these boats are, but basically, for those that don't know, it, you know there's a summer season, which is crazy. It's by far the busiest season of the year. And then you have the winter season, which is basically the holidays some in the Caribbean, uh, sometimes starting in Thanksgiving and, and going into like February, March, and that's pretty much over. It's, it's way easier than the summer. Then the gaps are some sort of yard period, either on the East Coast of the US or in the Med, pretty much anywhere. And, and then there's travel time. So, and I think what you did on, what I, the clips I saw of you on Axioma uh, with Sasha and Jared was you were, trying to do the behind the scenes kind of like look we're even when there's guests on board like this is non-stop and, and it is non-stop and you and i have both been uh back-to-back -back charter season chefs where there is no one to rotate with and there's just like well you get a little bit of free time okay when the boat's crossing or whatever and then you come back and your department's fucked because there's only one person in there and there's no prep done and, and there's 30 contractors and now your sous chef is burnt out already before the season even starts and it's just hectic. So I, I do think that's a very, and I think that's more to what Jared's doing is that that's a great angle just to be like, it's not justifying. I, I, that's why I kind of want, want it to be, but it, it's just transparency. Like, look, it's, it isn't all roses. Everyone thinks it's like, oh, you just fuck around when there's no guests on board. It's just, I wish. Yeah, oh. it's, it's, just, it's just as busy. So, yeah, I mean, we know that. But uh, this, you know, this series with Axioma will show that. It will show how busy, you know, spending millions of dollars in a four-week period just to... Just what were to, they doing? Uh, so did a lot of teak, did a lot of, uh, yeah, just heaps of repair jobs. Just to stand But they were, they, were, they, were, they were finishing the med season, doing some work here, and then getting ready to cross the Atlantic, right? Correct. Correct. So hopefully the second part will be Jared... Uh, Jared and myself in the Caribbean documenting them getting ready for charter. So it's going to show both oh, sides. Yeah. That'd be wicked. Yeah. Yeah. It's showing the repairs or whatever they fixed or upgraded and this beautiful, see the chef yeah. again, like the chef be prepping for the season. And that would be epic to see, like, like obviously everyone would love to see the cooking for the guest part, but like also just the massive prep part. Like, what, what, what happens? Like, what, what, what do you get ready for? What do you freeze? What do you dry? what do you ferment as as we know there's not many people out there that show all that like you know i show some stuff you did story. yeah yeah uh but very like minimal very quick nina like is probably the biggest on on youtube with that stuff on youtube yeah correct she's but, awesome but really to have somebody there to just follow you and document like the whole situation that's like it's never happened before without having to do it yourself like you did <laughs> be way easier way more it's fun it's just hectic yeah yeah no i think everyone uh as it goes with your stories when they talk about you they're like i don't know how he found the time and I'm, and I'm like well he just took his hand and grabbed a phone and probably got his phone dirty and filmed it for three seconds and then whacked it up in the store <laughs> it to his head whatever it took but uh, it's gripping shit because it, it involved everyone and like yacht chefs loved it. And then also like just kind of pedestrian people that pedestrian chefs or just home cooks were like, that looks, it, it was inspirational to a massive group of people, not just yachties. I think that, that's the appeal I see. Yeah. It's really cool to hear because 
I didn't expect it to, to do that. I just, I just love to document. That's like what I love to do is I'm a chef videographer, you know, like it's that combination yeah. that I couldn't help it. And I love that people enjoyed it. <laughs> it got, a, it got an insight. It's just, it's just what I do. Um, so, and you know, what wasn't that part of your stipulation for joining Arians? Like, didn't wasn't that part of like tell tell that story? I think it's a good one. Yeah. So, uh, it's a it's a it's a bit of a long story, but basically, old Capitan uh, Dino, which you all know, he came to the back of my old boat in Majorca and just yelled for the chef. He's like, "Where's the chef?" And I was like, ah, I, was like I could totally see him doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so no fucks given. That's no, awesome. I love it. The, the captain was there. The the all the crew were there, and I just looked. I was like, "Holy shit! What did I do?" I thought I was like a drunk night out or something. Like I, I did something <laughs> bad. Uh, anyway, went to the back of the boat, talked to this this guy in like you know civilian clothing, and I was like, "Who, who are you? What's up?" He's like, "Look, I want to invite you to work on. I'm going for two jobs." I want to invite you to work on the boat if I get the job. It's a 60 meter and a 75 meter. And I said to him, I was like, sure. Uh, let's talk about it. You know, let's go for a drink later and have a chat. Make sure you're not a serial killer or whatever. So <laughs> we went for a beer, had a chat with him. Saw he was pretty serious, you know, checked his, checked his credentials. Uh, right. And about two weeks later, we get a call and he goes, all right, got the job on the 60 meter. You ready? Let's go. So yeah, but but I, I think there's, you're leaving out important parts. How, how did he find you okay. first off? And oh, then, yeah, and then, and then why, and then why, how to, to connect those? Sorry, I skipped a few. So yeah, he, he'd been, he followed me for about a year before on social media. He kind of watched my, I guess the way that I worked, the, the way that I planned, the way that I did food, the, the food that I created, he saw all of this. A captain was watching me this, this whole time, I had no idea. And basically he based it off all of that. He based it off, he could see the kind of person that I was through social media and my stories. And that was enough for him to come to the back of the boat and call me out and take a oh, risk. That's such me. a Dino move. It's and such it's a baller weird. move. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> such a baller move, love it. Hey, I'm gonna post your chef. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna fucking take him. Yeah, where is he? Yeah. <laughs> Love it was it. really, it was really cool. I was, I was in a bit of a rut. I was in yard. Uh, I was, I was hating life. So it was yeah. like, it was like the hand of God just pulled me out of the shithole and put me on a 60 meter. Too far. Bed. Too far. He's yeah. not a God. No, it's too far. No. Yeah. Too far. Can we cut, can we cut that? <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't edit that out. No, no, we'll leave it. That's anyway. awesome though. What a great story though. What a great way to like, and it, now that knowing Dino too, I could just see him doing that, man. It's fucking hilarious. I love the boldness of it. I can't reiterate that enough. I got to know that part of the story. I didn't know he just went to the back of the boat and took you. I, you know, it, I, I was surprised he didn't have a bottle of champagne just popping that, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, but, but then, uh, all right. So the next part that I want to know that, well, I already know, but I want you to tell a story is like, why? Why did he, because he wanted to do, what was his plan? Okay, so the, the overall plan was that he was going to create this, this team that basically uh, strategically was a power, a power move on social media, right? We were going to mm -hmm. take this vessel that nobody knew about, a vessel that had no social media records, no, didn't exist pretty much in that. Excellent kind of five. Yeah. Does anyone know about that boat? Probably not. Uh, ah. Not about yeah, yeah. No, nah, well, Excellent Five was it? Yeah, it was a big name. You, you, you're right. It was a, it was a big name in the charter industry in the old school way. In the charter industry, exactly. In the, the charter industry, for sure. Not yeah. the rest of the world, but I okay. nah. It's uh, yeah, it's two different stories there, I guess. Yeah. So keep going, keep going. Don't let me fuck it up. Go for it. <laughs> so anyway, he created this incredible team that was able to strategically put this boat on the map basically almost book charters through the way that we advertise the way that jared filmed these on youtube type youtube series exactly of the crew of the vessel of the, the places that we went the things that we did uh you know 
all these all these things that people got to see for the first time because of the way that we the way that Captain Dean that wanted to portray and the team that he set up to do this. That's awesome. So he yeah, he he knew I mean you were you were part of his master plan for the next job that he got. I wonder what would have happened if he got the other job on the 75 meter, if he would have had the same kind of because it, it does right. take a certain a certain type of owner to be like, yeah, that's a great idea. If I can go for it, just put it on social media. Well, cool. it, was, it was actually it was a 75 meter private yacht. So, oh, uh, could you could you imagine if it went that way? <laughs> it easily could have. Yeah, yeah easily could have. But huh. uh, yeah, we you know we had a boss that was uh, that was willing to take this risk. And I'm pretty sure it paid off. Yeah. Yeah, we just did back to backs all summer. So, and if it wasn't for COVID, we would have been back to back for three seasons or two seasons before that. Yeah, we literally, we literally took it straight from America to, to Europe, did charter shows, and literally booked out the whole summer. The boss couldn't even, he, he couldn't even book us. Yeah. I mean, and I think he, I think, I don't know, but I think he was happy to just, yeah, make that make that cash, which yeah. is wow, oh, it's great. Good owner too. I don't know if he's gonna watch this, but good owner. Because <laughs> it's like I mean, the, whatever we need, we get. Like Arians gets hooked up. You know, it's like I think a lot of charter boats are kind of skint, and and I think this is gonna sell. What I'm about to say is gonna sell the boat too, but it's true. It's like no, boat gets looked after. Like money's no object. It just gets. It's oh, if it's broken, well, upgrade it or fix it perfectly, and then. Where a lot of times, a lot of charter boats just get ridden hard, put away wet, and they're fucked. You can just see it. Oh, yeah, I think yacht crew can probably see it more than charter guests, but that's what's great about Aaron's. It's just it's still pretty polished after all this time. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's really good to see. It. It's a very, it's a fresh breath of air when you're you need uh, equipment to work with to be the best chef you can where you are, and it's you know you're getting approved for this stuff. It's it's, it's it's quite nice to to deal with a boss yeah. like that. Yeah, totally. Too bad you're gone, man. It's too uh, bad you're gone. Bad, but I, hey, fuck, yeah. I could be back. Stand by. Whoa. Whoa. Just briefly. Just briefly. Just briefly. Yeah. Yeah. I know all about that. I'm not really happy about that. But <laughs> I'm not gonna go anything. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. Um. Yeah, man. So, so on a, so you've done, you kind of dabbled in the project already with Axioma and it only solidified things. And I think you told me the other day you had a bunch of chef interviews. So you've, you've kind of done like phone interviews or I imagine Zoom interviews. And yeah. then, so what's the plan now? You're going to head to the Caribbean? Like what's, what's yeah, the so, plan? So we talked to, we talked to chefs, we built their stories. We talked about their, which is incredible to, to really dive into these guys. Like, you know, some of them are from uh, Sweden, and girls. you know, for, what's that? And girls. And girls. Yeah. Sorry, guys and girls. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, like some of these guys grew up in Sweden in like these little, uh, these little houses by the lake and they foraged for berries and like fished the lake and cooked them with their mom and made bread. Like there's just so many like deep stories here to tell. Anyway, awesome. so Yeah. Oh, so, so incredible. So incredible. All I'm hungry life. now. <laughs> uh so we've built their stories we've had the director basically uh sit in on these interviews and he has built the we don't want to tell the same story basically we want chefs with all these different types I think of that'd stories. be hard to do yeah, yeah in this industry yeah uh so we we've built their stories we're finding out their schedules uh because as we know boats I like this like all over the place so we basically need enough boats over there to keep us busy for four to six weeks uh, in the caribbean so then we can kind of pick and choose when the boats are ready we're not there to say give us yeah. this slot. give us this slot we're like all right you guys uh -huh. ready let's go yeah uh so well, how much time do you think you'd need to to do each chef like just ballpark like if if there was no other uh the kind of external fuck ups where oh uh, no we gotta do we gotta get provisions or you know, what, what what time do you need to, to film this stuff 
I maximum two days vessel use, like actually on the vessel, two days. Yeah. Yeah. Like that we could get it, we could get it done. But also, you know, we're ready to step it up and like follow these guys to uh, potentially to, you know, Sweden where they grew up. You know, that's the kind yeah. of what we could do. So there'll be, you know, some days there and days there. So something that, that connects the story, like this exactly. is who this chef is. Exactly. Uh, so probably, you know, five to seven days. Yeah, total. And but the, the vessel use is the important part. That's what I was getting at because that's the hardest part to get. I, but for to not interrupt the whatever the boat's doing and, and their timeline, which is that, that that's the crux. That's going to be the hardest part about what you guys are going to do is finding that time to go to Sweden is easy. You can do that whenever, but to get that boat scheduled time downtime uh, and to be able to film, that's going to be the hard part. Yeah, it's doable. It's okay. totally doable. Yeah, I mean, it's it's about the chefs, right? It's not it's not totally about the boat. You know, we're 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 able to show as much as the boat as the guys want to, but but really, it's like, yeah, it's about the chef. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sounds sounds awesome, man. Yeah, I hope to be on it one day. One day when I grow up, I want to be on your show, Dean. <laughs> what, what 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 would you do? What, what's your sell it? um wow well i mean the, the yacht thing is the easy part i think that's that's going to be the for lack of a better word samey part of what you're about to do it's it's the b-roll it's the story and then i think for me obviously i could it could be culinary school it could be best restaurant in boston it could be relay chateau in the florida keys all good stuff but i mean for me connecting the food it's been the motorcycle trip that i've been doing for 15 years on and off like that that's a mind blower for 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 myself that's there's no no culinary school could have even come close to what i've learned on that on those those two wheels going through hectic countries so yeah uh, that's I, it I, that's I, my pitch man short and sweet done so <laughs> i i you know i would have I would have told you that's what the selling point would be. You know, like you've traveled around on this motorcycle in these remote places that people don't get to see. You're in a village eating pad thai or whatever it may be, a curry. Bugs. Yeah, like bugs and all this crazy stuff. And I feel like you do, you take that, some of those recipes from your journey back to the yacht to cook for these. Tell a story. Tell a story. Yeah, exactly. I think it's that's great. That's cool, man. No, nah, it's been it's been shit hot. It's been really fun. Um, but anyway, this is a podcast about you and your project. But uh, yeah, that's my short pitch. One day, yeah, one day it'd be cool. I would love to do that. And it'd, it'd be so fun to. Nah, fuck it. We'll do another podcast about that sometime. But um, it's a good, it's a it's a great concept, man. So you're gonna go. Obviously, you you kind of have to be in my mind. You got to be at the beginning of the seasons, at the end of seasons. Except for the winter, because it's kind of loose. But the, you know, a charter boat in the Met is fucking nuts. Like it really is. We so hope, you'll be there in the. Yeah. Well, we hope to get the chefs before they completely burnt out. So. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's a valid point, though. Yeah. At the end, he's gonna be like, "I don't care. I don't give yeah. a shit. I just want to be off." Yeah. So yeah. We, it's, it's really going to be experimental for this first season. We're just going to have to just yeah. take it as, as we're going to have to get the shots when we can get the shots. We have to get the chefs in there, wherever they are in the world at the time. We're just going to have to, yeah, is what it is. We'll see with, we'll see with COVID too. I, I feel like that there's that little gap between the like Cannes Film Festival and the, um, the Formula One in Monaco where people aren't booked back to back. And they're kind of ready to go, but the season hasn't quite started yet. Yeah. But yeah, if you talk about July, September, forget it. Everyone's going to be like back to backs. All right. They won't even want to do it. Even though they do want to do it, they just won't. They're like, oh, fuck, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, even like some of the chefs that live in Europe or whatever, or, or from Sweden or from Spain or Italy, Man. you know, that could be the time to to follow them after the season back home to tell that rest of the story. So this could be a year project. <laughs> well, I hope it's fucking four decade project, to be honest. 
Like, I just think it's really cool. I'm, I'm picturing in my mind the chef's table and all the kind of the, the shoots they do at the restaurant, which as a chef, I, they're amazing. I love it. But instead of a restaurant, it's going to be a super yacht galley. There's going to be amazing kind of vistas and views around the yacht. And then the parallel to chef's table is like, you're going to go back and you're going to go uh, to the chef's garden where she grew up and she's going to be picking a tomato and just eating it off the vine and connecting with her youth. And like, dude, it, it's going to be, I think more interesting than chef's table, especially. Oh, yeah. It's got yeah. The other, it's got that, that the world that people don't get to see. So it's got that. Pirate vibes, man. Pirate vibes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Very excited. No, nah, man, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. And, and thanks for uh, thanks for doing a little visit to my, my little podcast here, bro. It's always good. You were the first one and you're the first repeat. So it's just been, uh, I, I just think it's exciting what you're doing. I was really happy to have you back and, and just to, even the questions that I didn't know to be able to talk about it. And uh, so everyone else, so I'm sure is curious, like, what, you know, what's the yacht chef doing? Like, what's, what's, where'd he go? He was on Arians. He was doing good. Uh, but he's got an idea, folks. He's got an idea. Someone said I have to change my handle because not on a yacht. Right. <laughs> Just, I'm not cooking. Nah. <laughs> Tell that person to fuck off. Yeah. You're the yacht chef, bro. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Keep the handle. You know it's a good handle. What a, I did what take the, I, I did take the mega yacht chef though. I, I I have that. Did you? Yeah, it was open. I just got snagged that thing. Yeah. I haven't done anything with it. Get on a mega yacht. Yeah, well, I think they're smaller than super yachts, aren't they? Uh, are they? I forget how it goes. Yeah, it's a weird cut up. We're, we're actually, I think, on a giga yacht. It's okay. weird, man. It's not nice. Giga yacht sounds like storage unit. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a 40 giga yacht drive. Uh, all right. Good for you. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> Sick, man. All right. Well, um, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for being on uh, Get the Fork Out. And I'm sure we'll have you on again because uh, we're all going to be like excited for you and glued on to what you're doing. It's, uh, yeah, stoked for you, brother. Yeah, thanks awesome. for coming on. Appreciate you having me. Have a good one. All right, homie. See ya. Yeah.